Todd, I said at the opening of this show, I said upon hearing he might actually declare, and then after he declared, and I'll repeat it again here, you know exactly what you just said. You know talent evaluators in the NFL, and you know how much they can fall in love with talent. All it takes is one is the famous phrase, obviously, to just draft anybody that has some question marks about physical attributes or anything like that. But it's the the desire to play football that everybody's got to be lockstep on and that everybody who evaluates talent has room for three Fs, faith, family, and football. There's no room for A's, Todd. There's no room for Red Sox. There's no room for Yankees. There's no room for any of that. Don't you think he has to declare one way or another at some point? And if so, when is that point, do you believe? I think he does. If he wants to be – if he wants to maximize what he can make. I mean uh, – to answer your question, I think it has to be before the combine. I really do. Because wow. if, if you're going to go through all of that, because then he, he's got to either show up to a his training camp or he's got to he's got to be at the combine and, and perform. So, I, I just I look at it this way: you you can probably go play football for two or three years and then go back to baseball. I don't think you can go play baseball and then come back to football at the quarterback position. And I definitely don't think you can do both. It's not like Bo Jackson. It's not like Dion, any of the other dual sport players. If you're playing a position, you know, a wide receiver, quarterback, running back, that's fine, but not quarterback. You cannot do both, in my opinion. So he's got, he has to declare and he's going to have to convince teams in a very short period of time that he's doing this really to completely commit to football for multiple years and to give it a, a full shot. I don't know. You know, I, I sat in the room with Lincoln Riley, and we all assumed, it was Brian Greasy and I, and Steve Levy, we were sitting in the room, and everyone assumed in, I think it was late October, before the Texas Tech game, that he was, he was a one and done. Every scout I talked to that has the, that area said, you know, we're not even really evaluating him because he's either going to come back to school or he's going to go play Major League Baseball next year. And so I asked him, I said, where are you in the process? Is there any indication if he's going to come back to school? Has any chance of playing in the NFL? Because I think, Lincoln, that he could, he could play at a high level. And he said, I agree. He said, I think he's a first-round pick. We promised each other we wouldn't talk about it until the end of the year. And that was the first time I had gotten any indication that he was thinking about it. But now, now that he's come out and said that he's declaring for the NFL draft, yeah. you also know scouts. In addition to wanting full commitment, they're a skeptical bunch, and understandably. And they're going to dig and dig and dig to try to figure out, is he legitimately trying to do this, or is he trying to – is this a leverage play? Is he trying to make more money? Because he could, off of his initial contract, guaranteed money, make 10 to $15 million more than that $4.7 million that he already has guaranteed by the A's to being a first-round pick. Todd McShay here on the Rich Eisen Show before the combine, huh? Because I'm thinking maybe the A's, as I, you know, are enlightened enough to basically say, you know, go see if there are other fish in the sea, go sow your NFL wild oats, and then come home um, and let him go to the combine and let him go there. And obviously, being somebody who's sitting in that booth for four straight days on live television on the NFL Network, I sure hope that happens. I hope that'd be great if right. Rory shows up there. Um, and, and and if he can handle all the questions, because that's when it would come, you know, uh, uh, all it, forget about spinning it on on the field and going through the drills. I'm sure he'll be dynamite at that, and he'll blow away the 40 yard dash line too. It, it, it's it's the meeting, it's it's the medical, it's the measurements and all that, but it's the meetings at night when uh, the coaches and evaluators are going to look him in the eye and say, well, what, what gives with the A's? Do you want to do this or not? And he can sit there and go up, down, left, and right and talk about how much he loves it. But at some point, he's got to declare. And if you think it's before the combine, then he's got to do that pretty damn darn fast, Todd. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. And if he, but if he gets to the combine, that's going to be the interesting part. Because as you well know, the psychologists that are in the room, it's not just the scouts and offensive coordinator, head coach, general manager in some situations, I'm sure even an owner in this situation, but they, most teams have a psychologist sitting in the room. And I think it would be fascinating. And I don't know that we'll get the answer for years, but it would be fascinating to listen to a psychologist 
talk about how he answered the questions and, you know, how he presented himself and if they legitimately bought the story. I mean, you can't, basically can't put a polygraph on him. But other than that, <laughs> you're trying to do everything you can to try to figure out if he legitimately wants to do this. Because there is a, there is a play for leverage, and we've already heard there's reports out there about the A's talking to Major League Baseball, trying to get exemptions to try to figure out ways to pay him more to make sure that he comes and plays for them in Major League Baseball. And so, uh, to me, this is one of the most fascinating pre-draft stories that I've been a part of in 20 years of covering the draft. I agree with you. I agree with you, Todd. So wouldn't that be great if one of the teams, like, hires Robert De Niro and they have, like, a meet the parents scene <laughs> where they strolls into the meeting room. Down in the basement sit, somewhere. Sit down, talk about a circle of trust, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.